We're going to use two-dimensional graphics a lot when we visualize data. We're used to using two-dimensional graphics, for example, for plotting functions. And so we'll focus on two-dimensional graphics now as we look at uh, methods for using graphics for visualization. What we're going to learn is the difference between vector graphics, which are used to specify two-dimensional graphics, and raster graphics, which are used to display two-dimensional graphics. And then we'll look at the coordinate systems specifically that are used for each of them. Vector graphics are the graphics that are used for drawing. We're used to drawing. We take a pen and we'll put our pen down at one point, and then we'll move our pen across the paper and then lift our pen up at another point and you get a nice straight line uh, between them, a nice continuous line. In raster graphics, this is the graphics that are used for example for our televisions and our phones. They're a rectilinear array of pixels and these pixels are assigned colors and by assigning certain pixels certain colors you can represent those same shapes so you will draw a shape using vector graphics you will describe a point where you want to start a line and a point where you want to stop a line then you'll you'll get a either a straight line or a smooth curved line between them and those will be converted to raster graphics for display which will consist of the pixels that get illuminated along that path uh, in order to display that path that uh, you described with vector graphics. So this process is called rasterization. And so we'll specify a primitive as in, in a vector graphics format. We'll describe vertices, points on the uh, plane, and then we will connect those points with strokes. In this case with straight lines, but they could be curved paths. And then those strokes can can enclose a region and so we can fill that region and we may assign a color for that region um, and for strokes we may assign a color and a width of the stroke or have the stroke stylized say with dashed lines or so on. The process of rasterization starts with these primitives de defined by these few data points and converts them into an array of pixels so that they can be displayed. And so this raster format representation of this triangle is as an array of pixels. And the dashed lines represent the original primitive on the left superimposed over the array of pixels that are, that are representing it. And in this case, we have pixels along the edges that are colored blue and pixels in the filled in region that are colored pink. And you'll notice when we rasterize a shape, we can get aliasing. And that's the fact that this nice straight line here in our in our vector graphics representation appears as uh, a staircased line. Uh, you get these stair step artifacts when you rasterize a smooth straight line and because those stair steps try to look like the original line but look a little bit different we call that an alias and that problem is called aliasing. When we draw primitives in two dimensions, when, when we want to draw shapes for two-dimensional graphics, for example for plotting functions, we're going to need a coordinate system in which to draw those shapes so we know where to place the vertices for example of a triangle. And so we need to define a coordinate system. And these coordinates I will call canvas coordinates. They're the coordinates that we're going to draw things with. Uh, in this case, the canvas coordinates have been defined to go from minus 1, minus 1 to 1, 1. And so they set up this square region of, of a plane. The origin would be here in the middle. Uh, you can define your canvas coordinates to be anything you like. You want to define them to be something convenient so that you can draw your shapes uh, without a lot of trouble. In this case, I've drawn a plot of a parabola, uh, the parabola y equals x squared. And so I've got a curved path starting at this point here, going to this point here. And I've defined my canvas coordinate system to be something convenient for that plot. In this case, I've started it going from minus 1 eighth, minus 1 eighth, to 1 and 1 eighth, uh, 1 and 1 eighth. And that's so that as I move 1 eighth, 1 eighth in, I'm at the point zero, 00 in my coordinate system and I can draw my plot going from zero, 00 to 1 1 here. And then I've got an additional eighth of a unit surrounding the plot in order to do things to add metadata like the title of the visualization and draw the axes and label the axes. 
So that's convenient, but as I'm resizing the display, I may want the fonts to be larger or smaller and I'll need a bigger margin surrounding the plot, or I may want the plot to be larger and the margin to be smaller. So in, in two-dimensional computer graphics, we can set up hierarchical coordinate systems. And this just means you have a canvas in a canvas. In this case, we have a yellow canvas that is the coordinate system for the entire plot, uh, the entire visualization. And then we have an inner canvas that is a coordinate system just for the plotted data, in this case, the parabola. And so I've set up the outer coordinate system to go from 0, 0 to 1, 1 in this region. And then I've set up an inner coordinate system to go from 1 tenth to 9 tenths and uh, 1 tenth, 1 tenth to 9 tenths, 9 tenths here. And I've defined its coordinate system to go from 0, 0 to 1, 1. So now I can plot inside this coordinate system using coordinates that are convenient for plotting this parabola. And then I can plot in this outer coordinate system using coordinates convenient for drawing the decorations, the axes, and the title. And so we can define whatever coordinate system we want, wherever we want, in order to make it more convenient to draw two-dimensional graphics. There's also screen coordinates, and these are the coordinates that are used for raster graphics, for the display of the information. And in this coordinate system, we have a, a grid going from 0, 0 to whatever our screen resolution is. Uh, in this case, since we're going from 0, 0, we go to our hor horizontal resolution minus 1, vertical resolution minus 1. Uh, if our screen resolution was 100, 100, we'd be going from 0, 0 to 99, 99. And the, the pixels are located on these grid intersections. And so you have a, a, a integer coordinate for each pixel location, which is useful when you're actually displaying um, an image using these pixels. You want to be able to locate each one of these pixels. And so there is a canvas to screen transformation that happens. So we're going to define our coordinate system going from some left bottom point to some right top point and and then we're going to plot using those coordinates and those coordinates are going to be converted to the corresponding pixel locations on our display screen and those pixel locations are going to be defined someplace on the display screen starting at x y and going to the point x plus the the width and pixels minus one and then y plus the height and pixels minus one so this coordinate system happens automatically and you can define these coordinates to be anything and you can define these coordinates to be any location on the screen and so your 2D graphics that you're plotting on your canvas can be automatically resized and repositioned anywhere on the screen just by controlling this canvas to screen transformation. You can also work directly in screen coordinates by setting up a canvas to screen transformation that uses canvas coordinates that match up with your screen coordinates. In this case, you're just setting your left edge and your bottom edge to X and Y, and your right edge and your top edge to X and Y plus the width minus one and the height minus one. And in this case, you can specify the coordinates of your primitives and vector graphics using the same coordinates for the pixels that, that they will be translated to. Uh, I don't recommend doing this uh, because when you're working in screen coordinates, you're not going to know what your output screen um, display device might be. It could be a cell phone, it could be a television, it could be a watch, it could be a video wall, and all of those will have different resolutions and you want to make sure that your two-dimensional graphics is properly displayed. It's not too small or too large when it's displayed on different devices. So it's better to work in some canvas coordinates that's convenient for you and let the canvas to screen transformation worry about converting it to the corresponding pixels. So what have we learned? We've learned that vector graphics is used to describe shapes and that raster graphics are what we use to display those shapes uh, using a, a table of pixels and that we can set up coordinates that that are convenient for us to plot in a canvas and those coordinates are different from the raster coordinates that we use to display the canvas and we can set up canvases within a canvas which allows us to divide up the screen in ways that make it more convenient for us to set up a two-dimensional visualization display